All right, uh, let's get started then. Uh, welcome to CloudWalk's AI team uh, weekly paper club where we discuss uh, what's going on, interest in data science, machine learning, and everything that we do here. Um, yeah, so uh, on Monday, I, I had a few options of papers that I was thinking about discussing this week, but just stumbled upon this one and forgot about all the others. I think this one is pretty relevant. Uh, and I think this may be one of the, the techniques that will push uh, sequence uh, processing forward um, in the next few years. Um, so yeah, everyone who has worked with GPTs and other large language models has faced this problem of dealing with longer sequences. Uh, you always have to fit your task uh, into the, the assigned amount of, of tokens processed by the model, right? Um, the largest one uh, that is popular currently is GPT-4, and you can get up to 32,000 tokens. Uh, but still, when you want to do something really complex, uh, it's a challenge to fit the relevant information into uh, a 32,000 tokens uh, prompt. Um, we keep trying to come up with smart ways to summarize the information uh, or embed the information somehow and be able to retrieve it. Uh, but it's a very artisanal work. It requires a lot of work dedicated to the task. Uh, so this is not sim something simple to work around. Um, we've seen over the years the the size of the the like the number of tokens processed by the models increase. Right, we are up now to thirty two thousand or sixty four thousand. Uh, but the, the attention uh, mechanism scales uh, quadratically in terms of the amount of uh, processing necessary. So, which is pretty intuitive, right? If you, every new token you add needs to be, uh, at, needs to attend to all of the other previous tokens. So uh, for every new addition, you need to pre-process everything else uh, in, in the context of this new token. So I uh, just to, to uh, add to the intuition, like if we're currently at 32,000 tokens, uh, in order to scale this to 1 million, you need roughly uh, a thousand times more processing power involved in this task. So there's obviously a, a processing number of operations limit to how far we can go in just increasing the number of processed tokens and uh, giving more information for the transformers to attend to. So yeah, this, this paper discusses the performance of a technique uh, proposed in a previous paper. So uh, they, they're proposing this, what they call the recurrent memory transformer. Uh, so yeah, just for, for a bit of background, uh, in the early beginnings of uh, machine translation uh, with neural networks, uh, the standard approach was to use recurrent neural networks. Uh, so recurrent neural networks, they process uh, recurrently token by token uh, and like step in a stepwise manner. Um, but the problem is that this, the memory of what has come previously kind of fades over time uh, because you're only attending to a single token at a time. Um, then in 2014, everything changed with the attention uh, paper. Uh, oh, uh, neural translation by jointly learning to align and translate or something like that. So they invented this attention mechanism where you're simultaneously attending to the entire sequence. Right? So this has been a game changer, which then allowed for the, for the introducer of the transformer architecture. And in, in the transformer architecture, you totally dropped the recurrent neural networks from the, from the game, right? You don't use this idea of recurrence anymore. Uh, each the processing, the embedding of each token is allowed to consider the entire uh, sequence from start to finish. Uh, so yeah, that's the idea of transformers. Uh, and the history of transformers is, is kind of the, the transition away from recurrency uh, into attention, right? So you're not proce processing things step by step anymore. You're looking at everything at once by using the attention mechanism. And this, what, that's why I kind of find this funny that the the solution to the problem of, of uh, long sequences might uh, include recurrency once again, uh, but now at a higher level. Uh, so yeah, 
almost concurrently with this paper we're talking about, the researchers, they proposed a dedicated architecture called the recurrent memory transformer, uh, where a transformer model is trained from the ground up with this idea of recurrency. Uh, but now the paper we're going to discuss takes this one step further in terms of being useful in terms of the applicability, because the idea here is to use a pre-trained uh, transformer model, uh, in this case, BERT, but you just use a pre-trained model and you apply the idea of recurrency as a wrapper. Uh, so you don't need to train a full transformer model from the ground up with uh, a gazillion uh, se long sequence of tokens. You can just do something similar to fine tuning in order for the model to learn how to deal with this idea of memory and recurrency. So, yeah, right. So, looking at the paper here, uh, they were pretty, the, the authors were really in your face here. They started the paper uh, with the first figure that shows what, what this is all about. Uh, and the idea is that you see here there are three tasks. Uh, we'll discuss the tasks in, in details. Uh, but the, the point here is that you can see that the performance of this new model on these three tasks barely changes when you uh, increase the sequence length, right? Uh, so you see in the beginning here, 32,000, 64,000 tokens. And as you increase the sequence length, uh, the performance is pretty much unaltered. Uh, so this is a very strong indication that the model uh, trained in the, or fine tuned in this fashion is able to retain information for, for a long, long sequence of, of steps. All right, so what are the contributions here let me change to the appropriate portion of the paper all right so uh what's new what's what's cool here um the difference here or they're proposing in this paper is you start from a pre pre-trained uh transformer based model uh in this case they're using bert uh so uh, they're using bert base i think uh, the smaller one uh, so it's pre-trained. You don't need to go through all of the steps of training uh, with uh, a bunch of a lot of GPUs and a lot of processing power. So you start with it pre-trained, and you kind of slightly modify uh, the sequence of tokens that you that you feed into the model in order for it to learn to deal with the the concept of memory uh, at the segment level. Um, so yeah, this is what's going on here. They're basically wrapping a pre-trained model from Hugging Face. Uh, and by doing this, the performance uh, scales very well to, to long sequences of tokens. They tried it up to 2 million. So pretty long sequences and the performance was basically unaltered. Uh, and the really important advantage here is that the computational cost does not scale uh, quadratically anymore. It scales uh, linearly with the number of, of segments that you're, uh, that you're processing. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about how they wrap the, the model here. So let me zoom in, get a closer look at what's happening here. All right. Um, so yeah, basically like this, yellowish uh, beige uh, box here. This is the, the standard uh, standard BERT uh, model in this case, right? Um, so what BERT is doing normally is just receiving a, a sequence of tokens, processing it, and delivering a set of embeddings for, for each token. Um, BERT was trained to process a sequence of 512 uh, tokens. Uh, so this is how BERT functions normally, right? Uh, now, what they're doing here is uh, they're adding the, the idea of recurrency by starting each sequence uh, with a few memory blocks. So basically, they're using 10, 10 memory slots here. Uh, but like basically, your, your, the, the first 10 uh, tokens in your sequence, uh, you're going to reserve this little block uh, as a memory, right? So you have a, a memory, a block of 10, 10 vectors here, and then you have all of the, the following normal vectors, normal tokens you would insert into BERT anyway, right? Um, so the model is going to process all of this and deliver an embedding for each of the, the tokens in the input. Uh, what you do is you take the embeddings learned for the memory tokens, 
uh, and then you feed this this memory into the next slot. Uh, so you are recurrently uh, applying the BERT model to to a series of segments of text, right? And like the way I think about this intuition here, like it's not precisely what the model is doing, but to me the intuition is. Uh, Suppose you had a task uh, like summarizing a long book or something. Um, and you can't attend to the entire book at once. Like it's too long. Let's assume you can only attend to, to a single chapter at a time. So one way you could do this is you process the first chapter, you write the summary of the first chapter, right? And keep this, this summary. The next step, uh, you feed your into your model a summary of the first chapter plus the full second chapter and ask for a summary, a combined summary of chapters one through two. Uh, and you keep doing this. Like, then you, in the next next step, you provide the summary of the first two chapters plus the full third chapter. And then you get a summary of one through three. Uh, so you kind of accumulate this process of re uh, recurrently uh, taking the summary of everything that's come before uh, processing it together with the new piece of information and creating a summary, an extended summary with everything you've seen so far. Uh, by the end of this process, you would have a summary for the entire book, which you gathered by uh, recurrently processing chapter after chapter. So this is kind of what's going on here. Uh, it's not in the space of text, right? Um, as, as summaries for chapters, it's in the space of embeddings. Uh, but the idea I think holds, uh, you're getting a, a, a few memory vectors from all of the previous segments of text, uh, and you're processing this together with the, the new segment, and you keep doing this recurrently until you've processed the, the entire sequence. Um, now, uh, if you take the original BERT uh, as is from Hugging Face, uh, BERT doesn't know what to do with memory, right? Uh, it hasn't been trained to... to uh, to learn that it needs to, to gather a summary of everything that's been processed previously into this uh, 10 slots of, the, of memory, right? So it doesn't know how to do this. So you still need to do some fine tuning. So the idea is you, you, you're going to prepare uh, a data set with a task that requires the model to keep this, this type of memory uh, encoded somehow in the, in the memory slots. Uh, you're going to create this data set and then you're going to continue training, uh, fine tuning uh, your base model uh, until the performance converges. Um, so you still need to do some some training of the model, but uh, doing fine tuning, training the model for for a few extra epochs uh, is way simpler, way easier than training Bert from scratch with a full huge data set, right? So. Uh, yeah, you're taking you're taking advantage of a pre-trained model and just uh, doing fine tuning for a few extra epochs uh, in order for it to learn to deal with this concept of memory. Um, I think this this is pretty cool because uh, you don't this doesn't depend specifically on a certain architecture, right? In this in this paper, they use Bird, but uh, you could have used anything else. Uh, you don't need to change the the, archite the architecture in in any manner. Everything, all you're changing is uh, what are the sequences that you're feeding into the model, uh, because you need to insert this this memory slots, and you're changing the fact that you need to take this the embedding uh, created by the model for these memory uh, slots, and you need to feed it into the next sequence. So, like everything you're changing is basically outside of the the model architecture, right? So this is very uh, extendable, I think, and very flexible um, to be used for, for other models that might be better suited for your for your application. Uh, so theoretically, you could do this for, for any model, but any um, you, you would still need to have access to the code to be able to fine tune it. Uh, so this wouldn't work with, with the GPTs, or GPT-3 or 4, uh, for instance. Uh, they're not uh, open source. You can't just download the weights and do fine tuning on your own. Uh, so this is restricted to, to the open source models uh, that you can get access to the weights. Um, all right, uh, yeah, so this is it in terms of the model architecture. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. 
yeah. All right. Um, yeah, equations here just describe uh, what we've been talking about, right? Uh, the concept of uh, concatenating the memory uh, sections uh, with the actual text you're training on. Um, they did an evaluation for the computational efficiency, right? So this is one of the uh, important points of, of doing this. Uh, and the conclusion was that the, the number of operations scales linearly, which is super important. Uh, so the amount of computation you need to, to evaluate two segments is just twice the amount of computation you need to evaluate only one. Um, yeah, so you can see this in the, in the plots here. So this would be linear scaling. Uh, yeah, all right. Cool, so what's the experiment that they did here? Um, first of all, let me scroll here. First of all, you need to create your data set, right? Because you still need to do some fine tuning of the of the base model with this concept of, of memory slots, right? Um, so basically what they did is they, they took a data set that contains questions and answers uh, and they added a bunch of noise to the questions and answers. Uh, and there are three different tasks, uh, and the tests are determined by where you add the noise, basically. Um, so I think this explains it better. So uh, the first test, the easier one, is the memorized task. So basically, like, you had the question and answer um, based on a fact, right? Uh, so in this case, they introduced the fact in the very beginning of the sequence. Um, the question is in the end of the last sequence, and then you have an answer, which is what the model uh, needs to, to learn, is to keep the information from all of the, the process sequences and be able to answer, right? Um, but they, they, they added a bunch of noise here, uh, and enough noise to make, uh, make up for several segments between the question and the actual fact, right? Um, so in this in this picture here, you'll see this represents having three different segments, right? So you would, would have the fact in the first segment, uh, followed by a bunch of noise to complete the 512 tokens. Uh, and the model somehow needs to use those memory slots to learn this fact, uh, register, keep it in memory, uh, and pass it along while processing the next uh, segment. Uh, and while processing the next segment, uh, keep the relevant information and pass it along to, to the next one uh, so that when it gets to the last uh, segment, which contains the question, you will have somehow access to the first fact here and, and be able to use it to, to answer the question, right? So this is the simplest task, memorize. The fact is in the beginning. Uh, a bit more complex is the detect and memorize, uh, where the fact can be in any of the segments uh, so it's not necessarily in the first slot here. So it needs to be able to detect the relevant fact uh, somewhere in the sequence uh, and be able to keep it in those memory slots to be able to answer a, a question in the end. Um, and finally, there's the reasoning uh, task where there are multiple facts that are spread across this, uh, this sequence. Um, yeah, so these are the three tests in, in order of complexity. Uh, and this is pretty sensitive, like the performance is pretty sensitive to the model's ability to keep those facts, to encode and keep those facts in memory to, in order to have access to them um, in the end. Um, so it's also very sensitive to the length uh, of the sequence, right? To the, to the number of segments that it needs to process. Uh, so if you if you have to process uh, lots and lots of segments, the model needs to be able to propagate this information across uh, several of these recurrent applications of the of the base model. Uh, so yeah, this, I think those tests are pretty representative of. Uh, they're very they're able to capture what uh, what the problems that the, the researchers are planning to solve here. Um, all right, another interesting point here. Uh, yeah, so 
they use the pre-trained uh, BERT model for hugging face, as we talked about, uh, and they're using a memory size of 10. So it's 10 memory slots in the beginning of each of the segments. Um, all right, so something relevant here, they're using what's called curriculum learning. Uh, so if you think about those tasks we talked about, uh, it's obviously more difficult to process and to keep facts when you have uh, lots of segments, right? Uh, so when the when the fact is very far away from the from the actual question, it's more challenging to to learn how to keep the the information in memory. So what they did here is they sequentially fine tuned the model, sequentially more challenging portions of the data set. Right. So they started out by training with a single segment. So you have the fact, you have the question in in, in the same uh, 512. Uh, tokens segment. Uh, when this converged, they started using two segments. So you have the question in the first one, uh, and you have the you have the fact in the first one, and then you have the end, the question in the second one. When this converged, there's, they started using three. So you have a longer distance between the the fact and the question. Um, so yeah, this apparently made the model the the, the fine tuning more robust and converge more. Uh, more with more stability. All right, well, let's check some of the results here. Um, so what you see here, each of those curves um, represent the model trained on a certain number of uh, a certain number of segments, right? So if you take the lighter one, uh, this curve here. This is the, fir the first version of the model trained on a single segment. So you have the fact and the question in the same uh, set of 512 tokens. Um, and you can see like it start off, starts off when you evaluate this model trained on a very on just one segment and you evaluate in a single segment, then the performance is nearly perfect. But just as you evaluate on a second segment, uh, evaluate on a data set that is a, a bit more challenging, then the performance drops significantly, uh, which makes sense, right? The model wasn't still wasn't uh, trained to learn to keep this this memory. Um, now you look in the second one, uh, this curve right here. Uh, so you train it in, in two segments, right? First one contains the fact, second one contains the question. Uh, and you evaluate it in, in a similar task with two segments, it performs perfectly. It performs almost perfectly with three segments, but then with four segments, it starts to, to degrade. Um, so you see, if you train the model uh, with more of those uh, curriculum learning steps, uh, it tends to, to become better and better at keeping the information across a, a longer sequence of, uh, of segments. And what I think is really interesting here, uh, really, uh, yeah, has a lot of potential is that the the model they trained for seven segments. So again, fact is in the first one, and then the questions in the seventh one. This model performs nearly perfect, even as you evaluate it with up to 15 segments of distance. So like once the model learns, the, this idea of keeping keeping a memory of the relevant information across multiple segments, then you can extrapolate to to a a, a sequence length uh, way longer than than you originally trained it on, uh, and you can see this on uh, the two uh, first tests, right? Memorization, it performs the the model trained in seven segments performs almost perfectly, up to fifteen. In the detect and memorize task, also it, it performs almost perfectly. Uh, then in the reasoning task, uh, it kind of starts degrading uh, after six or seven segments. It's, in fact, a, a bit more challenging uh, task as you add more, more, uh, more information, more tokens, right? All right, so let's see something interesting also um yeah so uh, in the in the images here we're seeing the the evaluation up to 15 uh segments right so 15 segments of 512 tokens uh 
but they wanted to test the limits of this. So they actually evaluated the, the model up to uh, a little over 4,000 tokens, 4,000 segments, uh, which sums up to, to over 2 million tokens. And this is the figure you see in the beginning, right? So let's go back there. So again, so this is the performance on the three different tasks, right? Uh, and this is a model trained uh, to retain facts for over seven segments of, of uh, information. Um, and you see that it, it extrapolates uh, very robustly to up to two million tokens. Uh, so like, this seems to be evidence that the, the fine-tuned model really learned this idea of keeping a memory across several segments of text. Uh, so this seems to extrapolate very well to, to longer sequences. All right. Uh, yeah, one more thing I wanted to show here is the attention maps. All right. So let's zoom in just a, just a little here. So these types of attention maps are pretty common when you see those uh, papers about uh, transformers and attention, right? Um, so attention is this idea that the, the processing for any token in the sequence, uh, the determination of this embedding, uh, it can, it has access to all of the other tokens in the sequence, right? Uh, and by looking at how much importance uh, any of the, the tokens gives to the other surrounding it, you can see, like, you can almost see what the model is paying attention to, right? Um, and uh, yeah, and, and it's important to look at those attention maps because sometimes the, the model is formulated in a way or the approach is formulated in a way that, that matches an, an intuition that we have about how it's going to work. Uh, but yeah, you, you really need to inspect the, these attention maps to figure out if that's actually what the model is paying attention to, uh, if what the model is doing matches your intuition. Uh, about what the architecture should be doing. And in this case, it, it does match uh, pretty well. Um, so you see here, the, the, these are the keys here in the X axis, uh, in the columns. So the phrase here, the hallway is south of the bedroom. And then you have a bunch of, a bunch of trash here, a bunch of noise. Um, so you see like for for the word hallway uh the model is paying attention here to all of the the memory blocks uh and it's also paying attention to the word surrounding hallway so it's paying attention to the to hallway to east and to south um so yeah and, and you can also see how the model is uh what the model is paying attention to in order to to create this memory right uh, to me, this is a bit surprising that it seems like the model is paying attention to the entire sequence uh, and is embedding this in the separator. So this is a, a bit weird to me. I would expect the memory uh, columns to be a, more activated than the separator. But yeah, anyway, um, so the embedding of the separator is keeping uh, all of this information, is, is paying attention to all of this information here. Um, uh, so yeah in this first segment there's relevant information about the position of the the hallway um so right the the model is going to save this information to memory here um then in the second segment like if you look at the phrase here this is all noise this has nothing to do with the with the question so this is irrelevant uh, and you see that the attention is almost an identity matrix here so the 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 separator and the memory columns they're really not caring about the the rest of the tokens here uh, that are presented in the sequence so the memory is pretty much left untouched um, then this memory is passed uh, into the processing of the third uh, segment and here again the bedroom is south of the garden so this is relevant information again so you can see that this is there, there's a very concentrated uh, activation, saving to memory, uh, and then this is passed to the last one, 
Uh, and you see that in, in order to answer the question, the model is paying heavy attention to, to what's in the, in the separator memory here, to what's in the memory blocks. Um, so yeah, in order to answer something about the bed, like in here in the call, in order to answer something about the bedroom, uh, the model is paying close attention to the embedding for the separator, which is where it seems like it saved the, the information from the previous segments. So yeah, I'd say this really corroborates the, the intuition that the model is learning to use those memory slots here in the beginning of each sequence uh, to kind of keep a summary of everything that's been processed uh, in the previous segments. All right. Uh, yeah, so I think that's most that's basically the the information in the paper here i think um to me there there are a few relevant takeaways from this uh first of all i think it's kind of ironic to see uh the return of this concept of recurrency in order to extend the uh, the memory and the the ability to process long sequences because this is where everything started in terms of using neural networks to process uh, text, right? Uh, but at, at first, we were doing this in the token level. So you would process one token at a time. You would use your model to process the first token, take the result, and use it to process the second, and so on and so forth. Um, then transformers came, the, the attention mechanism came and changed everything. So suddenly, we were doing this. Uh, we were using the attention mechanism to to process the entire sequence uh, at one time right uh, and you, you would use attention to to calculate the weights you would give to each of the portions of the the sequence uh but because this doesn't scale very well in terms of uh computation uh requirements uh we might see recurrency returning as part of the solution right um so we would use transformers to to attend to an entire sequence limited to to a certain number of tokens uh, and then we would just keep a memory and use the same uh, model to process uh, the next sequence so we're kind of seeing a return of recurrency but now at a higher level instead of the, at the token level uh, we would see this in the the segment level so recurrently processing uh, sequential uh, very long segments so yeah this i think this might be a part of the of how the technology moves forward uh, uh, recurrency used to solve this problem of processing very long sequences um and i, I think also we can learn a little from the intuition of uh using this cumulative sweep of long sequences right um we've been using a lot of of gpt4 either the the 8k version or the 32k version uh, and sometimes we just have more information than this that we need processed uh, so this idea of processing things uh, recurrently and keeping something like a summary or a memory of the the relevant bits uh, in the previous uh, portions this might be part of how we solve our own problems uh, in the space of uh, actual language, right? Uh, so you can ask, um, I don't know, if you have something very long to process, you can ask GPT to summarize bit by bit and they would just sum everything in the end. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's that's everything I had to say here. So if you have questions or comments, now is your time to shine. <laughs> Really, really nice presentation, Fabio. So, Thanks. does anyone have any comments for Fabio or questions? Anything? Like, it's your time to shine, like Fabio said. Because you know? <laughs> <laughs> I do have something, some, but well, if no one has anything, uh, I was going to say what you finish, right? I thought it was really funny how back to recurrency right so yeah like oh it's so hard because it's one token at a time so how you train that it's not very it's, it's very slow and blah 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 and then now they use this and they are able to reach right 
not one single token, but like the sequence. So maybe like this divide and conquer thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I thought that was really, uh, it's funny, right? Because like when I was reading like first time, I read like recurrent memory transfer, like that, that, that ain't be slower, right? Mm -hmm. But no, right? It's 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 it, it the way that they do. Uh, I guess also they don't. I don't. I don't remember reading on this paper about it. But I guess they did on the recur the RMT paper mm -hmm. uh, about the memory, right? Like how how long do they use this memory thing? Because it kind of works. It's kind of I don't know. I thought it's really like the the thing that I think uh, makes this 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 architecture really work, right? And it's really interesting, like you said on the end, like the attention map, right? So you can mm -hmm. see like how it, it really works, right? It's, it's another concept, right? So you have to sort of that key value there, like the query key, etc. Then now maybe you have like this memory thing going across the the segments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it could be using, it could be doing something completely different from the intuition, right? Yes. Because yes. it, it learns yes. from gradient descent. It doesn't care about what we, what was our idea when creating yeah. the 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 model, right? But mm -hmm. yes, it yeah. seems to be working according to to intuition. Yeah, no, I, I think it's really. I don't know. I think yeah. like the, the, the you presented very well. I think the concept, right? How it kind of works, the tasks that they do, so like they create some noise in natural language, right? So it's not. Mm -hmm. like the, very easy. yeah i mean the, to me the, the one really surprising thing I, I really didn't quite understand is the idea of having the question in the end yeah yeah that's the thing that's not because all the tests are, are with that but um uh, yeah I, I don't know like maybe they this they found that the experiment was this way but uh, yeah, i mean I this is normally how we you you, you would have the test, right? The the yeah. question is the last thing you, you you provide to your model, and you could have an arbitrary uh, amount of data that having been processed before. But what's surprising to me is that the model decides what to keep in memory without yeah. doing what's going to be relevant in the end. To yeah, th yeah. That, that's the thing I, I, I still didn't get it. <laughs> like, how, how is it? Because it's noise, like it's natural language noise. So like, how he knows that, like the example, like where is Daniel, right? So how do you know, like Daniel is, is kind of relevant. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep yeah. that across so, segments. Perhaps it's keeping a memory of everything that is relevant in general and not necessarily mm -hmm. relevant to answering the question, right? Yeah. So uh, in the limit, if you have a very long sequence, you would just wouldn't have space in your memory vectors to keep everything that is interesting, right? Yeah. If you don't try to focus on what is interesting to answer the question that you're being asked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really. And another thing that I thought was funny was like when they are getting like when they explain the extrapolation, right? So how many segments it trains? Like uh, they have here, like the uh, can you go like section four two? It's not nothing about the paper. I thought it was funny. Think about uh, last week. I go for two. Yeah, yeah, like a bit down. That uh, yeah, like interestingly, the no, 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 you can go up. You can go up. Second paragraph for, for two. Like interesting, the ability of MRT to generalize to longer sequences also emerges with a growing number of. Uh, I was like, I, I, I for I, I didn't thought about it, but I was like, oh, wait, is this the metric the guys are using or not? <laughs> but but uh, I thought just that, like just thinking about the other paper club. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I think like yeah, I thought, I thought it was that, funny like, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah, the, the guys are trying to come up stuff, but I mean it shows right. Like the figure shows that you train on the segments is able to retain the the, the data. Yeah, like maybe emergence is a poor choice for words because uh, yes, yeah. if you have too few uh, too few segments, like, the model hasn't even been exposed to the actual task, right? Yes, 